Hello everyone and welcome to the Educational Technologies in the Classroom Part 2 presentation. My name is Tifoina and I'm one of the Accessible Teaching Coordinators at the Office for Students with Disabilities at McGill. So the Office for Students with Disabilities is located on 1010 Sherbrooke on the fourth floor and you can see all of our contact information displayed on this slide here. The Accessible Teaching at McGill project aims to provide professors, course instructors, and teaching assistants with resources and the know-how to embed accessible teaching practices into their pedagogy. So if you think about it, learners vary in readiness levels, life experiences, perceptual differences, language abilities, and more. And accessible practices are designed to help reduce barriers to learning and also to support teaching strategies that help meet the needs of all learners. So why do we use technology in our instruction? Multimedia and technology allow course instructors to incorporate flexibility into their classrooms while also engaging their students. So powerful technologies applied in meaningful ways can help facilitate accessibility by allowing for flexibility, all response system applications that gather data from all students, polling, creating a class web page, or reducing barriers to shyness or mobility. I'd also like to add here that all the technologies presented are free, although there is the possibility of purchasing premium accounts for more elaborate features. So today we're going to be looking specifically at how simple educational technologies that are either displayed as virtual walls, video discussion platforms, or websites can be used to test for student understanding. So the first application that we're going to be looking at is called Padlet, which is a virtual wall that allows students to work on a virtual bulletin board that works very much like a sheet of paper. And so they're able to post anything from images to videos to documents to links or texts from any device, so desktops, tablets, smartphones. And this application can be used for multiple different types of activities in the classroom, including formative assessments, brainstorming activities, summarizing activities, or more. So the teacher simply asks a question on top of the virtual wall and watches student responses populate their screen in real time, really watching the Padlet come to life. So to create a Padlet, the course instructor would have to simply create an account, and then they click Create a Padlet. And in the settings menu that you will find on the top right corner of your Padlet page, you have complete control as to whether you want the link to be public, meaning anyone with a link can view the Padlet, or private. So only particular people can view the Padlet. You can also choose to change the background of your Padlet, and you can also choose to share the link with students, which they will need to participate. So this is what a typical completed Padlet wall would look like. You can see here on top that the instructor has posed a question on the top left of the Padlet. They've also included a short description to specify what they are asking of the students. So on the rest of the screen, you can see a number of student responses, which will populate the screen in real time. You can also, as the instructor, choose to share the screen, project the screen in your classroom so that you as a class can see the responses coming in live although students can also see this live on their own screens as well. So Padlet offers some templates that you can choose from when creating your board, and this is mostly related to the aesthetic of your board. And the most important ones to you as a curator would probably be mood boards, bookmarks, Q&A boards, or KWL charts. The next application that we're going to be talking about is called Flipgrid. And this is a video discussion platform that allows instructors to use video to ignite student discussion and engagement. And it's a really great format option to provide to students for a summative assessment, for instance, particularly for students who suffer from anxiety to speak in front of others. So what Flipgrid allows them to do is to record themselves over either on a desktop with a camera or on their smartphone and to post the video response to a question the instructor has posed. So they can record it as many times as they want until they are ready to post. A typical flip grid might look something like this. So at the top here you have the teacher's post question, again along with a little description of what they are expecting. And much like Socrative, instructors will receive upon joining Flipgrid a Flipgrid code that will be their grid on which students can post their video responses to each question. And so when students 
go on to flipgrid.com, they will be prompted to enter a flip code, which is provided by the instructor. And from there on, they have access to the grid and they can click on the plus sign, as you can see here, to add their video to the grid. So note that for recordings of a certain length, there is a premium account that has to be purchased and more information can be found on the official Flipgrid website. Lastly, Google Sites is a free and easy way to create a website. And so it allows students to exhibit individual or teamwork in a creative manner. It also allows teachers to create course websites with easy access to all content. So all that someone needs to create a Google website is a Gmail account. And if you're using a Mac, note that you have to be using the Google Chrome browser for it to work. Creators of a website can choose for the website to be either public or private, and they also have control over the settings. And so to view the website and what it would look like to the public, you simply click publish it, tag it with a unique name that hasn't been taken yet, and click view. So here I have an example of what the general Google site might look like and so either on a desktop, on a tablet, or on a smartphone. And you can name your website, you can choose the header image of each page of your website, as well as the website menus. You can also, of course, include text on each page, or insert an image, a link, or embed a video. And so having a course website, for example, is a great way of making your content, content publicly available, if you so wish. And it's also a great alternative for uh, a summative assessment strategy, right? So having students create a website um, that will allow students to be creative and showcase their work in a different way. So here is a list of other useful educational technologies that may be of interest to you. And that's it for this presentation. I hope this was of some help to you. If you haven't already, go watch our part one. And uh, thank you so much for watching.